In the tense atmosphere of the Cold War, the United States sought a formidable guardian of its skies. A bomber capable of delivering a nuclear payload across continents. Enter the B-52 Stratofortress, a marvel of engineering that not only met but exceeded expectations, becoming a symbol of American air power for decades. But how did this iconic aircraft come into existence? Join us as we embark on a journey through time, explore the B-52's inception, its groundbreaking first flight, and the legacy it has carved in aviation history. Welcome back everyone to Aero Exploration and another installment of This Week in Aviation History. In this episode, we're going to uncover the history, the first flight, and the legacy of this iconic aircraft. As we enter the aftermath of World War II, the geopolitical landscape had shifted dramatically. With the Soviet Union emerging as a nuclear armed superpower, the United States was driven to rethink its strategic defense. In 1946, the United States had envisioned a new type of bomber, one that could traverse continents and deliver a nuclear ordnance, a credible deterrent against any possible aggression. But the path to the B-52 wasn't a straight line. Boeing's earliest submission was a straight-winged behemoth powered by six turboprops. When the Air Force dismissed this design as obsolete, Boeing went back to the drawing board. What followed was years of various design iterations, heated boardroom debates, and late-night engineering sessions. By 1948, the design had evolved into one that was a jet-powered aircraft. The swept-wing design inspired by German research and wind tunnel data was revolutionary for the time. But even with this new design, the B-52 faced near cancellation in late 1948. At that time, Boeing's William McPherson Allen famously presented his vision to the Air Force Secretary Stuart Symington with a last-minute redesign on hotel stationery. That meeting saved the program and marked the beginning of something truly legendary. As the project forged ahead, Boeing's commitment materialized in the form of two separate prototypes, the XB-52 and the YB-52. The XB-52 was the first of the two aircraft, but it faced some setbacks during its ground testing, including some issues with pressurization, which delayed its maiden flight. But that design was quickly outdated by the time it was ready to fly. Meanwhile, the YB-52 was poised to take bombing operations to uncharted territories. The YB-52 was powered by eight Pratt & Whitney YJ-57 P3 engines. It's a mouthful, but that's a lot of engine power. It was a marvel of power and simplicity, and the YB-52 was just lighter and faster and easier to maintain. So preparation for the first flight of the YB-52 would take months. Engineers would scrutinize every single detail, from fuel systems, control surfaces, anything that could make a difference or cause issues with that first flight. A custom control yoke was also designed to help pilots manage the aircraft's massive wingspan and flight envelope. Keep in mind that this is a huge wingspan on these aircraft if you've ever seen one in person. So that brings us to April 15th, 1952. Boeing's chief flight test pilot, Alvin Tex Johnston, and Lieutenant Colonel Guy Townsend would be at the controls of the YB-52. At precisely 11.08 a.m., they would advance the throttles and the eight engines of this massive aircraft came to life and gracefully lifted the B-52 into the air, marking a historic first flight for this next generation of bomber aircraft. Tex recalled that during takeoff that the wings actually flexed gracefully upward as their speed increased. At about 140 knots, they would rotate and lift the aircraft off the ground, and the YB-52 climbed into the Washington sky. What followed was a meticulously smooth flight. Over their three hours, Tex would perform system checks, gear retractions, control sensitivity, and cabin pressurization, and everything went by the book. So 
So after those three hours and eight minutes, the aircraft landed at Larson Air Force Base. Not only had the YB-52 succeeded, but it had shattered all expectations as being a smooth, reliable aircraft. So was the Air Force ready to go to the next generation of modern bombers? Well, with a wingspan of 185 feet and an unrefueled range of more than 7,000 miles, the B-52 was unlike anything before. In its top speed, it had exceeded 600 miles per hour. The Air Force had found its next great bomber. Now, the design of the B-52 is pretty efficient. Its thin wings allow for it to cruise at high altitudes, and with eight powerful engines, it has redundancy and additional power. The unique bicycle landing gear configuration with outrigged wheels also gave it unmatched ground handling for a bomber its size. Inside the aircraft, it had a two-deck crew compartment configuration, and it was split by function. So the pilot and co-pilot would be on the top deck, while a radar operator and navigator would be below. It was far from luxurious, though, and early models didn't have quite the creature comforts that you would hope. So the difference between the two decks could actually be pretty extreme. While in the sunlight of the upper deck, it would become unbearably hot for the pilots, while the lower deck, the crew would endure freezing conditions due to the fuselage design. So with those things in mind, the prototype would move into mass production. Between 1954 and 1962, Boeing produced 744 B-52s across multiple variants and each incorporating various advancements in avionics, their weaponry, and defense systems. The B-52 would become the backbone of the United States Air Force Strategic Air Command. It would embody the United States' commitment to maintain air superiority and a robust nuclear deterrent. But beyond that nuclear deterrent role, the B-52 would also demonstrate a lot of adaptability. From huge bombing missions during the Vietnam War, to precision strikes during the Gulf War and operations in the Middle East, the Strata Fortress has been a constant presence in the United States Air Force's arsenal. Now, despite its age, the B-52 is far from obsolete. There have been continuous upgrades that will ensure that the B-52 remains relevant in modern warfare enhanced avionics, integration of precision-guided munitions, and structural reinforcements have all extended the service life, with projections now indicating that the B-52 could operate well into the 2050s. Belovedly known as the Big Ugly Fat Fellow, or other descriptions if you know what I'm talking about, the B-52 stands as a symbol of resiliency and proving that enduring strength often outlasts cutting-edge advancements. From its maiden flight in 1952 to steadfast service today, the B-52 remains a testament to vision and adaptability. Its mission has evolved, but its purpose remains the same, to defend and protect the United States' interests high above the skies. As we celebrate this aviation icon, we honor the engineers, pilots, and crews who brought it to life and keep it airborne today. Now, over the years, I've had the privilege of seeing the B-52 a number of times during my military service and performing security operations for that aircraft. It is a massive aircraft. It's great to see that it's still in operation today and will be for a long time to come. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the first flight of the B-52 and a little bit of its origins. If you like this video and want to see more great stories of aviation history, be sure to subscribe to Aero Exploration, and I would appreciate it if you liked this video and left a comment below if you have any thoughts on the B-52 or other topics I can cover in future videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.